Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. The moment of truth. Today, we are going to talk about Peter. Today, we are going to talk about you. There comes a time when we enter into the moment of truth, and this is it for you. Peter is everybody's favorite disciple. He is the most featured disciple in terms of stories in the ministry of Jesus. It started in Galilee by the seaside. Jesus met Peter at his workplace. This was Peter at his best. That day was interesting. According to Luke's account, it was not just a casual meeting. Jesus borrowed Peter's boat and used it as a platform to create some distance between him and the growing crowd who wanted to hear his sermon. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Luke chapter 5. That was a life-changing moment. Jesus entered into Peter's world and introduced another way of catching fish. Peter did not know how significant that was, but a few moments later we hear Jesus saying to this expert fisherman, follow me and I will make you fish for men. On that day they met, Peter caught a large number of fish. Remember that point. Peter resigned that day from fishing and for the next three years and plus, Peter was in college. Peter learned Jesus. He saw him do miracles. He heard him preach about some powerful sermons. He saw him raise the dead. Peter did not miss anything about the man who called him and made such a change in his life. It was not an easy road. Peter was a guy who made many bleeps and blunders and sometimes got it right. One day, he answered a question that Jesus asked and he heard Jesus say to him, Blessed are you, Simon, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. <laughs> that was a gold star moment, if ever there was one. But it wasn't long after that his mouth got him in trouble. Yes, Jesus was telling them that he was going to be killed on one of their trips to Jerusalem and that on the third day he would be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Imagine in one chapter, Matthew 16, Peter goes from giving Jesus the right answer to a big question to being rebuked by Jesus. In the first instance, he spoke an answer that God the Father gave him, and the next time he was rebuked for being the mouthpiece of Satan. Talk about a man called Peter. We know of him denying Jesus not once, not twice, but three times in a few short hours. Can you believe it? The guy who was in the inner circle, the guy who walked on water with Jesus, the guy who wanted to build three tabernacles on the Mount of Transfiguration, the guy who was one of Jesus' closest friends, the guy who insisted that he would not let anyone kill Jesus, denied Jesus at the most critical time in their relationship. Fast forward to John 21, and they are back at the place they met a little over three years ago, by the Sea of Galilee. That morning, there was something familiar. Jesus told Peter and a few others to cast their net on the right-hand side, and they caught, catch this, 153 big fish. Sounds familiar? I knew you would remember. Same place. Almost the same experience, but today was going to be different. The first time Jesus called Peter to follow him and he would make him into a fisher of people. This time around, Jesus confronted him face to face, eyeballed him and asked him a simple question. Not once, not twice, three times. Peter, do you love me? It was several days ago that Peter was asked a question. You are one of his followers, right? 
And three times he not only denied knowing Jesus, but each answer got more angry to the point of him cursing. This time, the, a, a question be, was asked of him three times, and his answer got more emotional from anger to hurt. This time, Jesus confronted Peter by himself. This time, Jesus was not rebuking him for speaking out of turns. This time, Jesus was not calling him to become a fisher of men. This time, Jesus was calling him to a commitment. Jesus was calling him to surrender to his assignment. The first time they met, Peter made a decision, but he was not ready. This time was the moment of truth. Do you know that I want to use you for a special assignment, Peter? I have waited all this time for us to have this conversation in this familiar place among some of your closest friends. Peter, do you really love me? Things were never the same after that. Two pages later, Peter, who was filled with the Holy Spirit, preached the first big sermon and 3,000 people found Jesus. One page later, Peter healed a man in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. One page later, Peter stood before a tribunal and told them bold face, we would rather obey God than man. Peter was transformed and he went on to become the head apostle in the early church. So much for Peter. Let's talk about you. Today is the moment of truth, the day of reckoning. You have been a child of God for a while, but have you really been an active follower? Do you love Jesus seriously enough that you will not just be a follower, but be the true disciple that Jesus has always wanted you to be? After that last encounter by the Sea of Galilee, we never heard of Peter cursing. We never heard of Pete, Jesus rebuking him. We never heard of him denying Jesus again. After that moment of truth, Peter became the man that Jesus waited for three and a half years to see emerge. A man who loved Jesus enough to give the rest of his life to do the will of God. Peter, the disciple, became Peter, the top apostle. I suspect that you are on the verge of becoming like Peter. Yes, and maybe today is the moment of truth for you. What I will say to you is this. From this day on, do what Jesus wants you to do.